The Web 3.0 in crypto space is full of groundbreaking opportunities with blockchain technology poised to reshape the world as we know it. But on the horizon, a potential game changer looms, one that could undermine the entire value proposition of blockchains entirely, quantum computers. This rapidly evolving technology has the potential to disrupt countless industries, and many fear that it could completely render blockchain technology obsolete. So in this video, I'm going to break down the real threat that quantum computing poses to crypto, what it means for blockchain technology, and whether there's actually anything to worry about. I'm going to explain everything in this video today as a blockchain developer myself who works this technology on a daily basis. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below and subscribe. And if you want to see how to capitalize off this once in a lifetime tech trend in blockchain, then I can show you how to increase your income by becoming a blockchain developer over at dappydiversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so let's get into this. So are quantum computers a major threat for crypto or is there actually anything to worry about? Now, obviously nothing I'm saying in this video is gonna be financial advice. This is made for technical and educational purposes only. Now, I've spoken about this topic a few times on my channel, okay? If you've been following along, maybe you've seen that, but I'm putting this video out for a few reasons. Number one, I just got this question from one of my students that I work with personally the other day. Okay, they were wondering about this. So I imagine a lot of you watching this video are wondering about this too. And number two is we've seen some advances lately in quantum computing and also in the blockchain side of things that I want to give you some updates on. So let's look at that. But in order to, to do that at all, you have to understand the nature of the problem in the first place. So what is a quantum computer and how does it work? Well, I have to also confess that I am not a quantum expert, okay? I focus on blockchain technology, but I do understand pretty well how the two overlap and I've had the pleasure of speaking with different quantum experts who have verified that my understanding of this is, is pretty spot on. So let's explain a quantum computer and explain it like I'm five terms. So basically, a quantum computer is a very advanced computer that can do certain things that the computers that we use right now cannot do, particularly around encryption and cryptography. So how does it work? Well, the computers that you're using right now, let's say you're watching this video on a, on a laptop or a desktop or a phone or a tablet or even a smart TV, okay, those are computers. And specifically, they are classical computers. So you've got quantum computers versus classical computers. So in classical computing, basically at the core processing level, all right, everything comes down to ones and zeros. You've probably heard of binary, you've probably heard of semiconductors, transistors, all that type of stuff. So at, at the core circuitry level, the computer is really just operating on zero or one. So you can kind of think about another analogy, like a coin flip. So in a classical computer, you're just flipping a coin that's gonna be either on heads or tails, one or zero, on or off. So for these classical computers, this on or off state, the heads or tails state for the coin is what comes down to bits, okay? So you might have heard of that, like bits in computing. Now, on the other side of things, you have quantum computers, which use qubits, all right? And so if you think about the coin analogy, heads or tails, on or off, a, a qubit in a quantum computer could be both heads and tails at the same time. Basically, what these qubits are able to do is achieve a certain state called superposition, which allows them to be in multiple different states at once, which makes them very, very powerful for certain types of calculations and makes them far superior to classical computers for specific types of tasks. And these qubits that I'm talking about are able to do this type of thing because we're talking about the realm of quantum physics. This is at the quantum level. So we're getting down to the level of, you know, uh, uh, atomic particles and subatomic particles. And again, not a quantum physics expert, but that's what makes this possible opposed to the, you know, the bits and the switches that we're basically using at the semiconductor level for classical computers. So how on earth would these quantum computers threaten blockchains and cryptocurrencies? Well, because a quantum computer can potentially be powerful enough to do certain types of tasks that a classical computer cannot do as well, this particularly threatens the realm of cryptography, okay? So basically, blockchains are completely built off of cryptography. Think about cryptocurrency. That's where the word comes from, cryptographic currency. And the threat here is that basically all the encryption that we use on blockchain right now is essentially created by classical computers. And the quantum computers could potentially break the encryption that our blockchains and cryptocurrencies rely upon. So for example, whenever you use a blockchain, every single time you sign a transaction to move cryptocurrency from one account to another, a uh, public key cryptography essentially verifies that, that transaction is you whenever you submit that transaction to the blockchain. You know, that transaction goes on to get included to a bundle of records called blocks, 
which are chained together to make up the blockchain, and the method by which they're hashed and chained together also uses encryption. Just to name a few examples. So how does that encryption work? Well, basically, all the different blockchains that we use use certain types of encryption algorithms, where basically you put in a certain piece of information and it spits out a deterministic piece of information on the other side through some type of encryption algorithm. And now these algorithms that are used on chain are basically backed by classical computers and they're very hard to break. I mean, in theory, you could try to brute force certain types of encryption, but the problem is it would take you a very long time with the current power levels that you have to actually crack that. But what if you had a super duper 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 computer that could essentially shorten the amount of time to where with a reasonable enough time you actually could crap the encryption? Well, that's exactly what the threat of quantum computers poses. And so you might say, well, like, we've got quantum computers now, like, so why are we not seeing all blockchain just go down instantly? Well, that's because we do have quantum computers now, but we don't yet have sufficiently advanced quantum computers to pose an existential threat to blockchain today. You know, caveat that we know about. I'll explain that caveat here in a minute, but let me explain the current problem with quantum computers as I understand it. Again, I've had the pleasure of speaking with some quantum experts who have verified this type of thing. But let's go back and talk about the qubits, right? So at the quantum level, you have to have these qubits and in order for them to achieve these multiple states, they have to go into what's called superposition, okay? So that superposition where it's able to do all this crazy stuff that makes the quantum computer work in the first place, uh, it's a very brittle state, all right? So a lot of these qubits don't stay in superposition for very long. Uh, it also takes an insane amount of energy in order to make this happen. And it also takes a very controlled set of environmental factors. Temperatures are a huge part, things like air pressure, et cetera, et cetera. And so this technology is moving forward and is advancing towards getting this stuff to work like they intended to, but it's not yet at the state where it's stable and posing the threat for blockchains right now today that we know of at the time of recording this video, but it could in the future. So what, what do we do about that? Well, the good news is the blockchain industry is working to get ahead of this problem, okay? Because essentially, if you have uh, classical computers that are creating the encryption standards to run blockchains, well, you can essentially create quantum resistant cryptography. So if you got, you know, a bad actor with a quantum computer on this side, well, the answer is essentially use quantum cryptography to encrypt your blockchains and make them quantum resistant, right? Because right now, most people also have classical computers. So like these things are canceling each other out. So if you have a quantum computer over here that's a threat, then you just need a quantum computer over here on defense and they basically cancel each other out. So we just saw this recently. So Ethereum Foundation backs advanced cryptography startup ZK Knox eyeing post-quantum future. So they're trying to develop advanced cryptography solutions for the Ethereum ecosystem. They're trying to make post quantum cryptography on Ethereum more efficient so that the chain remains secure in the event of a quantum computing breakthrough. So you can see right there in the article, you know, we're, really what we're trying to do is get ahead of some type of breakthrough and be ready for it if that event occurs. And it hasn't really occurred yet. Now, so let's really answer the question, like, is quantum computing a major threat to crypto? All right. So at the time of recording this video today, you know, that we know of, the answer is really no, okay? Because we don't really see the technology out there publicly available to take down, you know, a blockchain or crack somebody's private key or do something like that, okay? Now, there's one major caveat to that, okay? So we could have quantum computers in intelligence agencies at the national level in the United States or some other country, okay? We just don't know. It could be completely classified information, all right? It's not uncommon for that technology to not be available to the public sector. So think about it this way. Like, let's say the NSA had quantum computers that could crack something like, you know, nuclear codes, all right? Are you really, and that's, that's a paramount issue for national security. What you don't want to do is utilize that technology to where someone else knows that you have it before you need it. So if you could go crack nuclear codes to prevent some type of horrible event happening globally, and you actually had to pull that trigger, all right, then somebody else is going to know that you've got that technology, all right? So you're, you're not going to go use this for nefarious purposes, like to take down the Bitcoin blockchain or some other blockchain. 
Like, like I said, it's not worth the value proposition. I mean, the crypto market trap's only only $3 trillion relative to many other huge things, right? So we could actually have that technology now, but it's not accessible to other people. So what the real potential threat is that we have some type of quantum breakthrough, okay, in the public sector. And that, that technology for a very small, short period of time is only available to a, a limited number of people. And if that limited number of people is either a bad actor or a bad actor is able to commandeer that technology before it's disseminated to the rest of the world, then there could be a short period where that actually does become a potential threat, okay? However, I don't think that would be a death knell for this industry. I do think that we'd be able to find a way to remedy a situation like that. Again, we do have people who are working on quantum cryptography, all right, in blockchains to get that stuff ready to go to where we could quickly commandeer that technology as well and implement this really fast to make quantum resilience on block. But in all reality, I think we're still a really long way from that type of thing happening, and I'm not really worried about it at the time recording this video. So let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Are you watching out for quantum computers? Do you think they pose a real existential threat to blockchain right now or at any point in the future? Or do you think, hey, this is really nothing to worry about? I want to hear from you. And whenever you're finished leaving your comment, make sure you smash that like button down below and subscribe. And if you want to take advantage of this once in a lifetime technology trend to get in on blockchain technology early, then I can show you how to increase your income step by step by becoming a blockchain developer over at dappyuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You really don't have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real-world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dapp Diversity.